everybody and welcome back to the channel and as you can see uh, the Christmas spirit has finally arrived in Otley I've got my little Christmas tree there I've got some flashing lights up and I've also got one of these uh, an advent calendar uh, but unfortunately I'm a few days ahead because I do like chocolate that nobody will uh, nobody will ever know but this uh, video is not about Christmas it's uh, about uh, a technique called stand development um, upstairs in our, our room we've got um, a display of flowers with glass vases that sit below it on a shelf and I've often looked at it and thought uh, that that would make quite a good still life but I've never got round to it well today in Otley it's been uh, dull windy and, and, and raining heavy so I thought this is a good opportunity one of the reasons is because uh, we're not getting bright sunlight coming in through the, the window uh, illuminating this uh, this still life uh, the light that was coming in will, will be quite dull and low contrast and, and I need that low contrast to con help control the highlights in the, the glass vases um, the the method that I'm going to show you is called uh, stand development and and that is another method of controlling the uh, the contrast in the picture now hopefully I'm going to get a low contrast picture where I get good uh, shadow detail and very controlled highlights. The developer that I'm going to use is um, 510 Pyro uh, and I'm going to dilute, dilute that one part of developer to 500 mils of water and when the film's in the tank pour the developer in I'll agitate it continuously for a minute and then just leave it to stand to slowly develop for round about an hour uh, an hour and a half and hopefully that will give me the negative that uh, I have control of the contrast. Uh, and also it will give that uh, sort of older look to the picture. The camera that I'm going to use is this one. It's my uh, 4x5 field camera, a Chamonix. And uh, I'm going to be using it with this lens, the 150mm lens. So I'll go upstairs now and um, we'll set the camera up. I'll show you how I'm going to set the camera up. Show you how I'm going to meter. I'm using a new meter that I've just acquired. It's the, the Ravini Lab meter. Uh, I've only just got that and I'm trying, I'm learning how to use it. But uh, I can use it on the standard uh, normal uh, spot metering mode. And I'll, I'll, I'll try and explain to you uh, how, how I meter for this scene. And then, as I say, once that's done, uh, we'll come down and I'll show you how I mix the developer, how I develop it, and then we'll see the finished result. So let's go now and uh, take the picture. Right, it's uh, not a very nice day uh, today in Otley. Um, it's windy, cold and, and wet, so I thought I'd do a still life uh, indoors. And uh, <coughs> it's, it's something that I've wanted to photograph for a while, uh, but never got round to it. And I'm going to use my uh, Chamonix 4x5 field camera to take the picture. And uh, I'll show you what I'm going to photograph. So I'm going to take a meter reading in the shadow area of the flowers. Now, if I just pointed this uh, spot meter at that area and went with that reading, it would turn this shadow area into uh, uh, zone 5. So, uh, all meters do that. So to get that area down to zone 3, where I will get some uh, textural detail, some uh, shadow detail, I have to put uh, a minus 2 compensation so it brings it from zone 5 to zone, uh, zone 3. And I'm going to be using this meter, it's the uh, Ravini Labs uh, spot meter. I've just got this uh, and I'll be doing a review on it later. But uh, t this meter, I can put that minus uh, 2 in. So what I'll do is I'll meter off that and, and with the minus 2 in, that's the meter reading that I'm going to use. So I'll turn the meter on. Meter that shadow area. Now I want to be working at round about F16. Uh, I'll bring it down to F16. And the reading in that shadow area is uh, 10 seconds. Um, so because I'm using Ilford FP4, it means that I'm going to have run into reciprocity failure. And um, the reciprocity failure uh, for Ilford FP4 at 10 seconds is 8 seconds. So the total exposure will be 18 seconds. So I'll, I'll load the film holder into the camera now and then uh, I'll take the picture. Right, get the camera set up. 
Uh, make sure the lens is wide open and the shutters open so I'll get the brightest view. And I'll just check under the dark cloth that I've got the composition right and the uh, focusing right. That looks about correct there. What I've noticed on this, I've got some of the mirror in the picture. I have nothing at this side, but I've got some of the mirror. And there's nothing I can do about that because uh, uh, this is not a, a setup, still life. It's, a, it's, a, it's how it is. Uh, and I can't, I'm not taking mirrors down and everything, otherwise I will be in trouble. Uh, so I'm just going to shoot it as, it as it is. Now, I'm going to develop, as I say, uh, the, uh, this picture, the sheet of film in uh, um, um, a very dilute developer, a Pyro um, 510 developer and um, give it uh, about an hour, an hour and a half development, just leave it standing in the developer without touching it and that should give me uh, a lot lower contrast scene and uh, because we've got the shiny uh, reflection from the glass, hopefully the this stand development will help to control that but I should get the, the shadow detail that I need. So I'll put the film in the camera and look at the timer I use my phone for this uh, let's have a look Right, so set the lens to f16. Close the shutter. Cock it. I'll just test it. It's on time, that's great. So when I press it, it opens it. When I press it again, it shuts the shutter. So that's all good. So I've cut the shutter. Set the dark slide out and start the exposure. So we've got to wait for 18 seconds and then the exposure is done. And I'll show you how uh, I developed the film in the, the, the uh, 510 Pyro uh, stand development. That's it. Dark slide back in, black facing out, so I know I've taken that picture. And we'll see how it all turns out. You know, as I always say, you've got to experiment with your different developers and films. Uh, hopefully, I'll get a nice uh, classic low contrast scene uh, with control of the highlights and the shadows. But we won't know until I get the uh, negative developed. Right, before I go ahead and show you how I'm going to develop the film, I just thought I'd show you uh, a few ways of how you can uh, de de develop the film if you don't have a dark room. Uh, in a dark room, you can develop the 4x5 sheets in a tray. But if you haven't got a dark room, I'm going to show you some different ways. Now, this is a, a Patterson 3 reel tank. You, uh, you can get uh, three 35mm spirals on this, uh, in this tank or... Uh, two uh, 120 ones like this and it comes with a, a center tube now this tube is important because when it goes into the tank when you put the lid on it sits inside like that and it, it, it you know it creates a light tight seal so the reason I'm telling you that is you can buy this uh, holder now this is the um, uh, mod 54 uh, film hold it takes uh, uh, six sheets of film. Just let me show you if I can find a sheet of film. Uh, it takes, uh, as I say, six uh, sheets of film and you, and you uh, load it with the emulsion facing inwards and you just press it into these little arms that have got lugs on them. So you can get three on this side and you can get three on that side. So that's six in total. But you must remember to always put this centre spiral tube or tube into the center and then we'll put it into the tank 
like that, put the lid on. The, obviously this is done in complete darkness, put the lid on and now we can work with the lights on and develop the film. So that's one way. Another way with the uh, three reel tank is to use a method called the uh, taco method. And that's where you, again, you look, you get hold of the film in complete darkness and you bend it so that the emulsion's face, facing on the on the inside like that and then an elastic band and then just place it over the uh, negative like that just to hold it with a gap like that and then place it inside the tank now you, you can get four uh, negatives this way into the tank so once you've got the four in or one whatever you're going to develop always make sure that you put the center spiral into the tank and then when you put the lid on close it it's light tight and you can develop the film so that's uh, another way um, now the way that I use is not the Patterson tank it's this one it's the Stearman Press uh, SP445 uh, tank it, it holds uh, four 5x4 negatives and they're held in uh, holders, holders just like that and there's another one inside so we get one on each side I've actually got a film on that one one on each side so we've got four uh, negatives and the way you load this again in the dark if you look there's some little notches at either side little notches and the film goes under that so in complete darkness you have to practice this in complete darkness just get hold of the film and put it under those slots little slots there and drop it down and then when you've done that just place it into the tank again the same complete darkness and uh, just put, put the lid on and then we can develop using these uh, inlets uh, for pouring and one for um, for filling up so you know it's a great tank is this and the the thing about this tank tank as against the Patterson uh, this one takes a thousand milli milliliters of uh, solution uh, to cover the 4x5 film if you're using it in the mod 54 a uh, little bit less if you're using the taco method but this one only takes uh, 500 mils it's 480 actually I usually top it up to 500 mils and uh, w once you've got the the chemicals in and the lid tight the screw down it's very easy to agitate and uh, it, it's a great tank if you wanted to get one of these these can be bought in the UK obviously the tanks can be bought in the UK but this one I don't think you can I might be wrong I don't think you can buy this tank in the UK you have to order it from uh, Stearman Press uh, if you just type that in Google it'll come up with it it's a company in America who make this and uh, the, the delivery is very quick and, and it's a great tank so I recommend go that way so I'm going to mix the chemicals up now and uh, show you how I'm going to uh, um, develop this uh, sheet of film. So let's uh, get the film developed now. Uh, the things you're going to need is um, obviously a graduate, uh, a stir stick, stir uh, paddle, uh, a little container from putting the 510 pyro in. It's very thick, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, you want to be using, with 510 pyro, all pyro developers, you want to be using the uh, alkaline uh, fixer uh, if you use an acid fixer it'll uh, remove the stain from the negative we don't want that to happen and you don't use um, an acid stop bath you use water for the uh, the stop and obviously you've got your water heated up to around about 20 degrees centigrade enough to go up to 500 mils and then you've got your tank with your uh, your filming and the other important thing is always wear gloves especially with this developer it really does stain and it'll stain your fingers and you won't get it off for a while so uh, always you're always best to wear gloves when working with chemicals so I need a, a little um, syringe this is just a little 5 mil syringe and I'm going to draw out uh, five, uh, one, mil, 1 mil of uh, 510 pyro but because it's so thick and I'll just show you this if I pour that into there you'll see how how thick this uh, 
developer is. It's like treacle. So I normally pour it into there and what I have left I pour back. And then I get the uh, the syringe, draw up one mil of solution, bring it down to one mil. And then I'm at one mil, that's correct. And then always put a drop of water into your graduate before you mix up the developer. So I'm just going to pour in a few mils of water and then squirt the squirt the developer in. Once you've done that, top it up. I'm topping it up to 500 mils because I'm working at 1 to 500. And then give it a good stir around. Make sure the the developer is uh, well dissolved in the water. It tends to sink to the bottom, does uh, five ten pino, it being so thick. And that looks fine. Check that out. And then get the tank. Pour the developer in. Once it's all in, start the timer. I just squeeze the tank sometimes just to fetch water up a little bit, and then when you let go, it just keeps holds the tank in place. And then just agitate that for. I agitate gently like this for about a minute and then once you've done that you just leave it to stand for an hour an hour or so and go make a cup of tea or watch a film have a sleep once the minute's up give it two three sharp taps on the worktop and then just leave it to stand for an hour an hour and a half I'll probably leave this for about an hour and uh, I think that that should should do it. Now you can, uh, I think, get away with developing four sheets of uh, uh, four by five film in uh, in this tank. Uh, I think if I'm correct in saying that uh, five ten pyro will develop eighty five square inches of film. I'll check on that. If I'm wrong, I'll, I'll put a note uh, uh, on the screen. But um, uh, four by five, so we've got four fives, twenty times by four, twenty five is eighty. So you could do four uh, at one to five hundred. So as I say, I'll go make a cup of tea now, and we'll just wait until uh, until this uh, development's uh, over. I'll, once the development's finished, I'll um, stop bath it in water, and then do it in the alkaline fixer for round about two to two and a half minutes. Give it a wash, and then we'll have a look. And uh, see what the negative looks like. Fingers crossed, everything's all right. All this video's been a complete waste of time. Right, time's up. It's had um, one hour and ten minutes. I've gone a little bit over, but uh, it, it doesn't make a lot of difference. Uh, the temperature really doesn't make a lot of difference. If you can keep it at a constant 20 degrees centigrade, that's fine. But if it drops two degrees below that or two above, it won't really make any difference. The thing developing this way is. You can develop different types of films uh, in the same tank. Um, you can even uh, use films. So I've got in there um, Ilford FP4 rated at 100. I rated it 100 ISO. Uh, I could have rated it Ilford FP4 at uh, uh, 200 or 250 ISO and still de developed the same negative, the same two negative, one at 100 ISO and say one at 250 in the same tank and uh, you get some great results with that because it, it does uh, tend to uh, uh, um, develop in this way give a, a speed increase so even by um, rating the film higher uh, where you would be under exposing it still fetches a good shadow detail out so I'm going to um, wash this now in water and then give it an alkaline fix and then we'll have a look at the negative
So, got the film washed, and I'm just going to hang it up to dry. The moment of truth. Oh yes, looking good that. And you can see on there the brown stain uh, that the pyro gives to the negative. It's looking pretty good that. Hang it up to dry. Yeah, looks very good that. I'll let you uh, take a closer look. So that's just a little uh, closer look of the negative. And as you can see we've got very nice shadow detail. We've got some nice highlights, they're not too dense. Uh, they're they're going to print really good. And the reflections uh, on the glass vases is not too prominent so that looks quite uh, promising. Yeah, looking very good that, I'm very pleased with it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is leave it to, to dry for a, an hour or two and then once it's dried I'm going to put it in my uh, Epson V800 scanner, uh, scan it at high resolution, uh, scan it as a raw file, bring it into Photoshop, I'll show you the, the, the scanned raw file, I'll show you the conversion that Colour Perfect's done and then the finished uh, picture. And also I'll just chat a little bit about the benefits and the disadvantages of uh, stand development. So why use a uh, stand development? Uh, some people will say it's uh, a lazy person's way of developing film but it goes a lot deeper than that. Uh, it's nothing new. Uh, photographers were using stand development uh, in the 18th century and they liked that because they got more control over the contrast on the, the negatives that uh, they were producing. Uh, there are other advantages such as uh, the adjacency effect and that's where when the film is left in the developer for a long period of time the, de the developer exhausts itself uh, it's slowly dying in the highlights and uh, we get this edge effect where dark areas meet light areas and we get this uh, apparent uh, sharpness this perception of a sharper picture um, and as the, the, uh, the developer is exhausting in the highlights the shadows are slowly slowly developing and this ensures that you do, most of the time, get very, very good uh, shadow detail uh, with stand development. Another area where it's very good is uh, you can use different types of film, as I said previously, in the same tank. We could use Ilford HB5 and FB4 in the same tank. Even at different ISO ratings, it will still develop the film correctly. It's not uh, uh, critical to get the temperature, uh, say just at 20 or 21 degrees it doesn't matter if it drops below 2 degrees below or 2 degrees above you'll still get a good workable uh, negative and as I say it produces this lower contrast which makes it a lot easier uh, to work with when you're editing say on a computer like I do through scanning or if you're working in a dark room and you're um, you know you're always trying to print on a grade 2, 2.5 paper you might, might have to go up a grade because of that low contrast. It really does uh, have its uh, advantages. Uh, disadvantages, um, one of them is what they call bromide drag and it's where the bromide ions um, when the uh, stud in the developer can settle slowly uh, to the bottom and, and especially on 35 millimeter film where we get the sprocket holes it can cause this drag, the light streaks that come down the uh, on the negative itself and ruins the picture. It doesn't tend to happen with um, medium format negatives and, and large format negatives but it can be prob problematic with uh, a 35mm film. It might be 
a good idea if you're doing the stand with 35 millimeter if you are getting this bromide drag is just gently invert the tank twice during the one hour development and that will ensure that the bromide in the developer is uh, moving about sort of getting mixed up again rather than just settling uh, to the bottom so that's why uh, uh, stand development uh, is a, a great method of developing film uh, disadvantages as I've said is a bromide jag um, the other thing is you know it does take uh, time uh, to develop a negative some people leave them for uh, can leave them for a day just to, to develop uh, but it's all you know part and parcel of film photography it's all good fun it's a way of trying to get the best out of your negatives and if you're in, in no rush I would certainly say if you haven't tried it uh, have a go at uh, stand development you don't have to use uh, 510 pyro uh, Rodinol's a good developer for stand, HC110, um, Ilford DDX is supposed to be very good. I mean, I've, I've, uh, I'm sort of experimenting more and more with 510 Pyro. I, I like this developer and I like the fact that the dilution is only 1 mil to 500 parts water, so it makes it very, uh, very economical. So as I say, if we're looking at this picture now, we can see this adjacency effect on the edges where the dark meets the light. We can see the separation of, of tones is very good. Uh, the shadow detail is excellent in this picture. And then if we look at the, the vase, the light for reflecting off the uh, glass uh, vases, you know, uh, sometimes that can be very problematic when you are uh, photographing uh, glass subjects. And it's really controlled uh, the, those uh, very bright highlights. The only place that I'm not happy is just at the top of the jar where the flowers go in. There is a bright area there. It's not blown, it's just the way the light was hitting it. But but overall, I was very pleased with it and I'll, I'll certainly try uh, more pictures using this method on, on my 4x5 camera because it, it is a slow process using 4x5, so the, the stand development really fits in with it. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about uh, stand development, just leave them below and I'll see if I can answer them. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, uh, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. And uh, as I always say, uh, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video.